Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome to Matt Pilates. This class is going to be all about your scapular stability. So with your scap scapula, they sort of hang on the back side of your upper back, your upper back ribs. And when we talk about scapular stability, it's also considered like anchoring of your scapula. And I do find that this is probably one of the most common areas of needing strength, needing to activate the serratus anterior, which is below the shoulder socket, and the lower trapezius, which is in line with the bra strap line or the tips of your shoulder blades. So I want us to work on those areas today in class, focusing on turning on the serratus anterior and the lower trapezius. And I wanna talk a little bit more about the lower, lower trapezius because we as a society tend to have more uh, work in our upper trapezius, the muscles up here along the base of the neck because we do tend to lift our shoulders up and it comes from actually a protection instinct as uh, we have evolved from really living in nature and being super aware of the potential threats that we kind of have always had this need or urgency of lifting the shoulders to protect the neck. So that is completely a survival thing. You know, it doesn't mean you're doing it consciously. It happens unconsciously too. And I know this for myself. I get like these really big knots in my upper traps because I just hold all my tension there. That's just where I hold my stress. So I want us to think about the lower trapezius as being the antagonist to the upper traps. So if your upper traps are tight, then your lower traps are weak, okay? The lower traps are not activating. So it's not pulling the shoulder blades down, therefore the shoulder blades get elevated and they get pulled up and the upper traps get really tight. So that's why if we can work on the lower traps, then we're gonna help create more of that stability and that anchoring of the shoulder blades moving down and the shoulder blade tips pressing forward into the back ribs. You want your shoulder blades to really be connecting to your ribs. Okay, so we're gonna do some exercises to work on that. Let's get started and seated. I really recommend sitting on a bolster or a pillow or blanket. I have a block here, I'm gonna sit on that. Okay. Oh, you know what? I want to sit on a wall. That's something I was really thinking about doing today. So if you have a wall, you can sit against that wall. And this is a really great way to feel the imprint of your spine. I've taught this class before with us on our back and the imprint of our back on the mat really helps to connect. So I think if we can do this on a wall, it's gonna give us that same awareness. So starting with your seat and finding the anchor points on the wall, find that your sacrum is nice and connected into the wall. And I have to work at this. This is a dynamic seat. This is not a passive seat. We have to really hold ourselves upright and press back into the wall. Now notice the ribs. Can you keep the connection of your back ribs into the wall? So press into it. Does Kelly want to go outside? 
Oh, the sound is the doorbell. Oh, there's no what? No doorbell, Callie. She can go out though if she wants. You can keep it open. It does kind of sound like a doorbell though. <laughs> I just realized it. All right, so find your anchor point. You can have your eyes closed if that helps you. Find that your sacrum is connected to the wall. Your back ribs are connected. And then your shoulder blades. So notice where they are naturally without correcting anything. Ask yourself, are my shoulder blades touching the wall? And most likely they are not. Where are they? Are they rounding forward away from the wall? That is normal. That's actually quite common. So let's see how it feels to anchor. Start by reaching your collarbones wide, smiling your collarbones out to the corners of your shoulders, and then turning on your lower trapezius by drawing the shoulder blades down your back. We aren't necessarily straining to do this, but it's almost like a gentle suctioning of the shoulder blades. Now, ask yourself, are my shoulder blades on the wall? So when I talk about anchoring the shoulder blades, it's that motion. It's that action of finding the shoulder blades and positioning them against your rib cage. And then let's do one more thing. Find your sternum. Now you can use your hands here. Your sternum starts at the top, connected to the clavicles, and then go down the sternum to where the rib cage starts to open. And that's your xiphoid process, okay? So we've got the sternum on the top, the xiphoid process at the bottom. And then press your xiphoid process, the bottom right here. Press it back into your shoulder blades while you're pressing your shoulder blades into your xiphoid process. This is a dynamic, subtle, isometric move. Deep awareness of your body here. And let's work on our breath. Inhale and through the nose, down into the back of your rib cage. Exhale, letting go. Inhale, expand the rib cage down and wide. Exhale, feel length of your spine as you close the ribs. Inhale, widen and expand the back rib cage. Exhale, anchor the shoulder blades. Feel your lower trapezius turning on so that you're not using your upper trapezius. Inhale, expand. Expand wide. Exhale, close the ribs, stay nice and tall. Keep your anchor points on the wall. Check in with your collarbones. Are you still keeping them wide and broad, smiling to the corners of your shoulder sockets? Tuning into the subtle activity of keeping your body in alignment. Dynamic neutral. I say dynamic because it's not passive. It is effort. There is effort here. 
one more breath as you inhale, expand through the back ribs. Exhale, lift from your pelvic floor to narrow your midline. Check in with the xiphoid process. Make sure it's still pressing back, pulling down, reaching towards the shoulder blade tips. Feel the lower traps holding your scapula down. Stay for one more breath. Okay, and then we'll take the arms in front, parallel, and notice your shoulder blades. Pull your shoulder blades into the wall. Keep the connection of your shoulder blades to the wall for your neutral, right? This is dynamic neutral. Take an inhale, reach your left arm forward so your shoulder blade reaches away from the spine, and then exhale, plug it back into the wall. Inhale, the right arm reaches from the shoulder blade first. Exhale, plug the shoulder blade back. Inhale, reach the shoulder blade. It reaches out broadly. Exhale, pull it back to the wall. Inhale, right shoulder blade reaches. Exhale, pull to the wall. Keep going. So we're creating that protraction as the shoulder blade reaches broadly, you should feel your serratus anterior. Remember the serratus anterior is below your shoulder socket. You've got your core engaged to hold you close to the wall. Find that you're using your lower trapezius to draw the shoulder blade down snugly. Xiphoid process pulling back. One more time on each side. Okay, and we'll get, we're gonna add rotation. So start with one arm turning from the shoulder blade tip, pressing that forward, and then wrapping through the pinky finger. And then turn it back into neutral, plug the shoulder blade in. Inhale from the shoulder blade tip, pressing forward up through the pinky finger. And then exhale, plug the shoulder blade back. Inhale, reach out through the shoulder blade. Exhale, plug it back. Inhale, reach out, find it, find that the movement comes from your shoulder blade. That's so important because typically we hear cues from the limbs. We don't really hear cueing from the spine. And I want you to really think about moving from your spine. So important that we can create that deep awareness Good, one more on each side. Keep the spine nice and long. Find your anchor point, xiphoid process, pulling back. All right, arms are parallel. Now we'll do what's called rib cage arms. You're gonna keep your body where it is on the wall and then start to reach the arms parallel overhead. And you're seeing that your shoulder blades are pressing into your ribs, your xiphoid process is pulling back. Smile through your collarbones, turning on your external rotators here with your shoulder joints going in external rotation. Pull your xiphoid process back, keep it connecting in towards the wall. 
your shoulder blades are gently pressing. The tips are pressing into the back ribs as you reach energetically through the pinky fingers. Keep that xiphoid process back. See how challenging it is to keep your spine straight? You're, anchor, you're anchoring your shoulder blades and your xiphoid process is pulling back at the same time. So there's a lot of deep internal work. Good, and then exhale, bring it to center. Find your shoulder blades are against the wall. So you wanna feel the imprint of the shoulder blades into the wall. One more breath here as you inhale, long spine. Back ribs are expanding. Exhale, take the arms overhead. Keep your back against the wall. Xiphoid process, pulling back, shoulder blades, reaching up into the back ribs, pressing the tips forward. Xiphoid process back, xiphoid process back. One more breath. And exhale, take it in. Really good work, nice challenge, right? To have that wall. <laughs> so just imagine how hard it will be to anchor when you're using your body weight, right? <sighs> okay, so now we can sit away from the wall just to give ourselves a little more room. Because we're gonna move our arms a little more. We're doing more scapular work. More scapular work. Now, I know the wall isn't there, but I want you to think about the alignment, just like you were doing on the wall. You've got your sacrum nice and vertical. You've got your co-contraction lifting up from your pubic bone, your pelvic floor. You're feeling that abdominal wall hugging you in, holding you in. You've got your xiphoid process pressing back, down and back. And then you've got your collarbones wide. This is very dynamic. There's a lot of little details of how to access the neutral spine. And then your shoulder blades are rooting down. They're anchoring down and wide across your upper back. Take the arms into your scapular plane. So they're in my peripheral vision here. And You've got the weight of the scapula, you can feel it more in this plane versus if you took your arms all the way up to the coronal plane. So you want to feel that you're getting the act action of the scapular mobility here. So we'll do, we'll do um, what's called choo-choo arms or scapular circles. So start by one arm at a time, one shoulder blade at a time, moving up towards the ear and then down the back and then out. Up to the ear, down the back and out wide. And you're moving from the scapula, just the scapula mobility. The arm goes with it because it's connected like one branch. But your branch, right, if you're holding your, a branch in your hand, the movement comes from your hand holding that end. So that's the scapula is the part that's moving, that's initiating the branch moving. Your arm is the branch. You are a tree. Imagine that. You are the tree. All right, for four. Three, two, and let's switch. Going up towards the ear, then down wide, into the spine, up to the ear, wide and down. You might notice that it's challenging to go a certain which certain direction. Okay, And then also notice as you lift the shoulder blade, how much easier it is to go up than it is to go down. Just stay aware of that. Squeaky toy. Let's do one more time. Good, hold the arm up, the arms are still up. We're gonna rotate the other arm. So bring it up towards the ear, down your back and wide across. Up to the ear, down, 
wide and across. So again, if it helps, you can close your eyes to really feel what's going on back there. A lot of times we aren't aware of the muscles in our upper back. So this is like retraining your body, your nervous system to map out where these muscles are. And then switch direction, circle up to the ear, widen down to the spine, to the ear, wide and down. If you do feel some soreness, that is good. That means you're activating, you're bringing blood flow into these new tissues. One more circle. Good. So you found your scapular mobility, the scapula, the scapula move in circles, right? They also go up, they go down, they protract and they retract. Okay, so they are pretty mobile. Ah, let's take ourselves into seated without the block here. Bring your knees bent. And then your hands behind your legs. So your feet are parallel. They're about a, a heart distance or a fist distance, the same, same space. You want to find your sit bones are reaching down underneath you. You've got your um, sacrum nice and vertical here, just like you were on the wall. Shoulder blades reach down and wide across your back so you feel that anchoring happen, okay? You feel the serratus turning on. And then inhale, nod your nose. Exhale, curl your, your pelvis to north and curl from bottom up into your C curve. So hold your C curve here. And you want to feel that you're getting a lot of that abdominal work here. The abdominal wall is lifting up from the hips. Working through this good amount of flexion here through the spine. Stay for one more breath. Keep pressing down into the feet and heels as you hinge from your hips. And then inhale, articulate up to your straight spine. Inhale here, nod your nose. Exhale north, find your C curve. Arms are straight now. And you're feeling the work in your abdominal wall, feeling that lift, that wave of energy holding you, holding you together. Exhale, hinge from the hips. Inhale, articulate up your spine. We'll do that one more time. Exhale, nod your nose, curl into north, find your C curve. So really think about the back of your body, creating this long length. Pull your sternum, draw your sternum back. Plug and anchor your shoulder blades, pressing them down and wide. Feel the work of your shoulder blades. Finding that stability. All right, go ahead and come on up. Inhale, articulate the spine up to seated. Really good. Then I want us to come down to our back and finish with a little bit of scapular thoracic mobility. You can do your C curl to come down. All right, so take your arms out like a T. Arms out like a T. And then from this position, you've definitely got your shoulder blades connected into the floor. You can feel their imprint. Take one thumb and or I should say, reach from the shoulder blade, press into the shoulder blade tip, and find external rotation. So your thumb is also going to spin up and back. 
Good, and then take an inhale here, long spine. Exhale, spin the, sh the arm, the shoulder blade, and switch to the other arm. Inhale here. Exhale, rotate both shoulder joints. And you want your shoulder blades to stay down as you rotate from the shoulder joint. So just notice the feeling of your spine connecting to your mat as you rotate from the shoulder sockets. Keep the shoulder blades anchored on the ground. All right, one more time. And then now we're going to add one more thing. So as the thumb comes up, I want you to turn your gaze towards that thumb and your sternum turning with it. So now your shoulder blade is going to lift off the ground, the opposite one that you're not looking towards. So that arm is an internal rotation. Your thoracic spine is looking over. Your head's looking over. Okay, inhale here. Exhale, rotate from the shoulder sockets. Look at your thumb that's up. Turn your, your sternum towards that thumb. Inhale here. Exhale, rotate shoulders. Look at the thumb. Turn your sternum towards that thumb. This is a beautiful way to cre create translation. Exhale, rotate. Turn your sternum. One more. Inhale. Exhale, rotate, turn your sternum over. Good. So you're able to get some good amount of that thoracic work going with the scapula. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with a nice simple head float. First inhale, nice long spine. Bring your arms alongside you. And then feel the anchoring of your shoulder blades reaching down and wide across your xiphoid process pulling down at the same time. Shoulder blades flat, inhale, long spine. Exhale, nod your nose, start to float your head up and your hands up at the same time. Find the shoulder blades, reach down and wide across your upper back. Stay right here. We're gonna add a little side to side. Right hand towards right foot, left hand towards left foot. Reach reach it's not a huge movement we want the legs to stay still and it's an oblique crunch here we're feeling keep reaching the sternum the xiphoid process down four four Three, three, two, two, one, one. Go ahead and curl it down. And then from this, we're going to go into a little bit of core work. So take an inhale first. Exhale, nod your nose, float your head up. And then take your legs into a tabletop position, or you can go with straight legs if you like. You're gonna pump the hands. Pump, 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 pump. That's it. Keep pumping, keep the shoulder blades anchoring down and wide. So your abdominal wall pulling up, hugging you in from your core. Halfway there, inhale for five, exhale for five, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, keep the femurs heavy, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, and exhale, good, you can come all the way down. Take your knees in here. And then if you like, you can circle out the legs. Knee stirs. So 
switch other way. Okay, so take your leg, hands behind the back of your legs. We're gonna go into some rolling. Keep your hands where they are. Let your hips rock back. Avoid putting a lot of weight on your head. Just keep it more in the shoulder blades. And then roll back and forth, rolling. <laughs> That's like a new, a new bone. Oh, yeah, it's pretty big. It's almost as big as her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. So this is like a massage for your spine. See if you can kind of hold yourself without touching your feet. Okay, one more time. And then meet me at the top. Hold your feet. Okay, great. Yeah, yum, yum. So now what we're going to do is called seal. And we want the feet to clap, like a seal clapping. They're flippers. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so take your feet together. And we're going to take the hands to the outsides of the ankles. Now, for this, I want you to curl your body, create a C-curve, and then pull your shoulder blades down and wide so you're getting that anchoring here, okay? Anchoring the shoulder blades is so important. Here we go. We go back, and then we come forward. We clap, clap. We go back, and then we go forward, clap, clap. Back. Clap, clap. Back. I want to see if she's going <laughs> to try to jump on me. All right. One more time. Clap, clap. There you go. Yay. All right. She's going to go take it away now. <laughs> and now we'll do what's called the open leg rocker. So open leg rocker requires a lot of ability to use your core in space and then we're going to do like a kind of a hold position at the end, at the top. So I can show you how that looks. Take one leg up and then take the other leg up. And you want to, from a C curve to roll back, you land. So let's say I just rolled back, it came forward. I'm going to go from C curve and I'm going to press through the chest. But I'm not arching my back because I'm still in a little posterior tilt. Okay, it might be hard to see, but you're in a little posterior tilt and you're lifting the chest. And I'm pulling with my hands. I'm plugging my shoulder blades down and wide into my upper back. So it's a lot of awareness of the shoulder blades. Okay, here we go. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, curl to north. And then rock and roll. Oops, sorry. Almost hit it with my butt. And then we land and we lift the chest. So then take an inhale here. Exhale, curl into C curve as you go back. Oh, I'm not really that great at this, to be honest, but I want to start doing it more. So here we are. I'm doing it. Inhale, lift through the chest. Exhale, C curve, rock back. Keep the legs strong. Woo! Legs have to be really strong. I know. It's tough. Inhale, lift the chest. All right, exhale, curl into north. We're going to keep the legs pressing, 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 pressing. Oh, man, it's a tough one. Hard to keep those legs straight. Inhale, lift the chest. Let's do it one more time. I feel like, feel like I got it this time. Woo! Where'd it go? <laughs> Take an exhale, curl to north, find your C curve, and then rock back. Oh, yep, had to bend the knees. That's okay. And then lift the chest. All right, that was fun. Wasn't that fun, Callie? I know. Pineapple. Okay, so now we get to come on to our hands and knees. Let's do some cat back here. <laughs> Woo. 
<laughs> okay, so from your tabletop, we'll do some cat back. Press your shoulder blades wide, nice and broad. Feel that stretch. And you want to also anchor as well. Feel that your shoulder blades, you're pressing energetically down to find your protraction. Inhale, extend your spine. Pull, pull your shoulder blades down and wide. Find your scapula of stability. Exhale, cat back. Press down with the shoulder blades. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, press. All right, now stay here, find table, neutral spine. Pull the shoulder blades down your back and then wide across. From here, we're gonna do what's called scapular push-ups. So you can stay on the knees, you can bring the feet towards the hips. If you want your body in a diagonal, you could do that as well. So I want the elbows to bend back. And the way we do that is through the smile, the collarbone. So smile to the corners of your shoulder socket. Keep that act, action going and then bend the elbows. So the elbows go back and then press. Keep your whole body nice and long. Bend and press. Inhale, exhale. Keep the line of your body super engaged. One more time, inhale. Exhale, press. Really good. So those are your tricep push-ups. And then we'll do scapular push-ups. So let the sternum drop, let the shoulder blades come together, and then exhale, press and broaden across. So protraction. Inhale, retraction. Exhale, protraction. Now the work comes from the scapula. I'm not bending my elbows. Big difference, right? The work comes from your ability to move from your scapula. So your ribs are just kind of going along for the ride. Four, three, feel that you're working the serratus as you press down, fire them up. One more time, press. All right, really good. So we'll take it on to our side here and give our arms a little break. We're going to go into a side lying position. Oh, it's so wet though. Where'd she go? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do some side lying here. Come on to one arm. Bring it into more of a kickstand so it's a little bit further away from your shoulder. And then you want to find that your scapula, you can take your hand here. You want to press and anchor the scapula into the back ribs. So I'm imagining I'm pulling that shoulder blade sort of forward and wide is probably the best cue for that. Forward and wide. So you feel that firing. You feel this lift of the ribs. That's the anchoring. Okay. And then bring your legs together, your heels a little bit further behind your pelvis. And then we're going to take the other hand and bring it to the back of the head. And find your xiphoid process. You're pulling that back. Imagine there's a wall behind you. You want to connect into that wall. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, press into the arm, lift the hips. Feel the stability of your scapula. Good. Feel that work. Now take your arm across to your hip. Reach it along your side. And then take it up along the ear. 
and then reach it forward across the hip. One more time, reach it up, and then bring it down to the hip, let the hips come down. All right, so that was teaching your shoulder blade how to anchor, which should feel pretty stable there. All right, so now we'll go into mermaid. So for mermaid, we're going to start in this, um, I call it swimsuit model. It's kind of awkward. Swimsuit model. I don't know. They, there isn't a really official name for this pose, but doesn't it look like, look like a swimsuit model kind of posing? So you're going to have your arm back, and it's kind of where your elbow was. And you want to find that your shoulder blade is reaching down, because if you don't, it's just going to hike up, and it's going to be hanging out. Shoulder blade anchors down, presses into your ribs, just like you had in your bridge. Okay? this top arm, we're going to go right up in to a side plank. So you can watch me first if you like. We're just going to press up and then see how the feet are staggered. And then I reach over the ear. I've still got this shoulder blade anchoring. Okay. And then I bend the knee to land. That's just the, that's just the tradition of uh, the flow of this exercise. So give yourself plenty of room. Take an inhale, anchor the shoulder blade. Here we go. Exhale, mermaid, take a side plank. Find your side body opening. Yeah. And then take it down. Inhale here. Exhale, mermaid, lift off. Inhale. Exhale, bend the knee. One more time, inhale, anchor the shoulder blade. Exhale, mermaid. Straighten through the legs, find your stack, staggering hip. And then exhale, bend the knee. Good, now we'll take a quick stretch. So bending the knees here, take a side stretch. That serratus was working pretty hard in your spine bridge, spinal bridge, and your mermaid. All right, let's take it to the other side. Come into a side bridge first. You can get it, it's right there. <laughs> you want it to be on the ground? Okay. <laughs> she knows we'll just give it to her. She just barks enough. <laughs> How can you say no? To that face. Okay, so the elbows more forward of the shoulder like a kickstand. You can take your hand to your serratus interior here and then plug your shoulder blade down and wide into your rib cage. So you feel that anchoring here. Take an inhale, long spine, hip stack, feet stack. Exhale, lift up into the hips. Option to take your hand behind your head and then feel that shoulder blade anchor. You want to feel the work. It's dynamic. It is active. You're pressing into the back ribs and your thyroid process is pulling back at the same time. Okay, inhale here. Take the arm overhead and then exhale, bring it down by the hip. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale through the hip. Inhale overhead. Exhale through the hip one more time. Keep that anchor. And exhale, bring it all the way down. All right, come into swimsuit model. My hand is now on the ground. I'm feeling that anchoring of the shoulder blade down and wide. Super active here. Super active. And then I've got my hand sort of re, re, uh, facing up ready to reach overhead take an inhale here exhale reach up anchor the shoulder blade feel the press of your ribs to the sky and exhale bend the knee lower down 
Inhale, anchor. Exhale, mermaid. Inhale, one. Exhale, lower down. Good, one more. Inhale, anchor the shoulder blade. Exhale, mermaid. Inhale and exhale. Bring it down, really good. Bend the knees. Take that side into a stretch. Feel the work, feel this opening through your side. All right, we're gonna take it to the front body. So this is a great way to really check in with your anchor point of your shoulder blades. I'm gonna put a little towel under my forehead so I have that support. My neck can stay nice and long. And then from here, I'm gonna take my arms along my sides and notice where your shoulder blades are. Are they rolling forward like they were on the wall? Can you reach the shoulder blades back towards your feet and find the suctioning, the anchoring of your shoulder blades? So there's some effort here, right? Especially because we're going against gravity. We have to work against gravity to anchor. You've got your pubic bone pressing straight down. Back of your neck is nice and long. Find your co-contraction as you engage from your pelvic floor through your abdominal wall. Inhale here. Exhale, lift both legs without changing your pelvis. So you're keeping awareness of your core and you're making sure to squeeze from your glutes creases, the lower glutes. How are the shoulder blades? Are they still reaching down your back? One breath here, exhale, lower the legs. Keep the shoulder blades anchored. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift your legs. Your whole core is nice and active. Exhale, lower down. Again, inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift from your legs, squeeze the glute creases down into the mat, root through the pubic bone. Keep those shoulder blades anchored and then lower down. All right, next is diamond arms. Take your hands forward overhead and touch every single fingertip with the mirror image, the other hands, fingers. Press into the pinky fingers, press the elbows down into the earth and then just lift from your hands as you push the elbows down feeling the anchor the wrapping of your shoulder blades this is working your lower trapezius inhale here exhale lower inhale long spine Exhale, press the elbows down, lift from the hands. You should feel this from the shoulder blades. In exhale, bring it down. One more inhale, long spine. Exhale, press the elbows, lift from the hands, keeping the arms working in one unit. And then lower down. 
<sighs> All right, one more thing we'll do is called Sphinx. So make sure you've got enough space in front of you because you're going to be sliding your arms. Okay, so arms in front. Forehead down, anchor through the pubic bone. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, start to lift from the back of your head and then slide the elbows under the shoulders as you use your core to hold you up. Now find the shoulder blades are reaching down and wide across your upper back. This is a good challenge for your scapula stability. Inhale, lengthen from the front of your body. Exhale, slide the elbows while you lower down your spine. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, roll up, slide the elbows, anchor the shoulder blades down and wide. You want to feel the serratus firing up. Inhale here. Exhale, slide it down. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, lifting up, slide the elbows, reach the shoulder blades down and wide. Feel the work from your core. Squeeze the glutes, help get the legs active here. How are those shoulder blades? Are we still reaching them down? If you can't really tell, then if you have a mirror, you might see that there's something like this happening, something like this happening. The shoulder blades, see the shape of them? That's how you know they're rounding. Shoulder blades should go back, open through the chest, and I'm feeling the shoulder blades reaching down. Okay, there's a lot of work. It's starting to cramp. Okay, now we're, all we're gonna do is tuck the feet and lift into forearm plank. Find your shoulder blades anchoring by pressing them forward, pressing them down, I should say, towards the ground, and activate the serratus, hugging the shoulder blades into the body. Keep the collarbones wide, and then we're just gonna take one foot to the side, the other foot to the side. So I'm using the anchoring of my shoulder blades to keep my body in the same line. And I'm adding a little side foot tap to give challenge. You can choose to stay still. You can choose to lower the knees. How's your abdominal wall? Are you keeping your abdominal wall hugging in? This is it for eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Child's pose. Big toes touch. Knees wide. <sighs> Flip the palms up. Feel work coming from your scapula. As you press through the chest, All right, go ahead and make your way up to seated. We'll just do a quick little shoulder stretch. So take your arms into eagle arms where hands can be touching or the tops of the hands or the hands. Um, you can have one arm straight, just like the traditional shoulder stretch, your choice. And you want to feel that you're spreading the shoulder blades apart. And then start pressing the hands forward and let your head drop. So this is stretching the 
Middle trapezius, rhomboids. And then coming on up, take your elbows wide, press the elbows back, press the hands back. So you should feel a stretch in your chest. Good, and then we'll switch the opposite elbow on top option for hands to touch or you can straighten one arm the arm that's on top press the hands forward let the head relax Good, come on up to center. And then one thing left is to breath the elbows back with the arms and goal post. Clasp the hands behind you, press them straight down. Feel the shoulder blades reach down the back. See if you can pull the hands apart. Feel the work in your shoulders. One breath here. And open mouth, exhale. Beautiful work today. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, gather up all that energy. Exhale, take it to the heart. Two more, inhale, reach up, gather. Think of that golden light and exhale, take it into your vessel. One more inhale, golden light. Exhale, bring it in. Thank you for practicing. I hope that you feel strength in your shoulder blade uh, stability today and to continue doing this kind of work. Um, if you are new to this practice, take your time. Foam roll, tune-up ball, massage, all of those things really help to activate more of the tissues. I will see you next time on my channel. Thank you.